the U.S. moved ahead with tariffs on China imports. How should the U.S. expect China to respond? Well, I think China already had its uh, responses, right? We had uh, some kind of uh, reaction, the tariffs. $75 billion. Something like that, yes. And it already went into uh, simultaneously with the U.S. tariffs. I think that's a very strong message that China is not going to stand down. We're going to protect our interests, our legitimate interests, but we're not going to do it we're not going to do it uh, over the top, let's say. We just want to send a very strong message. As our guest said just now, this uh, tariff uh, escalation is hurting China as well as the United States. So we don't want things to go even worse. The market is trying to understand if a meeting between U.S. and Chinese officials will happen in September. Do you think it's going to happen? And if so, what is China's ultimate objective? Well, I think China's ultimate objective is to reach a deal with the United States uh, because, as I said, our economies are being hurt. It's not good for the Chinese economy. It's not good for the American economy. So we want to have a deal. But as the Chinese government said already, um, the United States will need to have create the conditions that are conducive for the resumption of negotiations. President Trump's decision to put additional tariffs this September 1st is not in the right direction to, uh, for talks to resume very soon. Right. But at the root of this trade dispute is China uh, forcing U.S. companies to share technology and IP when they operate inside the country. Is China ready to make concessions on that front? You know, this is a very disputable point because you see things that way. But if you go and ask a lot of American companies, the latest statistics survey by the U.S.-China Business Council uh, found that actually 5 percent of American companies say they have been asked to transfer technology and it was not some kind of forced technology transfer. They would all have to agree to it. Otherwise, they drop the deal. Uh, of course, that survey was based on a rather small sample. It was 100-something. But I think it does say, say something. Um, if, you, if you talk about uh, IP protection, I think China is aware of the problems that we have. We are doing a lot because China is also very much investing on innovation and uh, IP protection because we also want to be able to innovate ourselves. We are also climbing up on the in innovation index. So a lot has been done. A new law on uh, foreign investment has been put in place to further enhance IP protection. I can give you a lot of things. Right. But I think more work certainly needs to be done. A lot of U.S. companies come on our air every day talking about how that is a concern as they try to expand across the country. Let's move on, though. I mean, our president has stepped up his attack of President Xi uh, as this trade war continues. What's the perception of President Trump inside China? Well, I think after um, a couple of years of President Trump's term, I think the Chinese people have uh, kind of found a way to understand him. We are not going to follow what he says every day because that's going to be very perplexing and exhausting, actually, to a certain degree. So we actually want to see what he does. You know, at the end of the day, his policies and what really happens on the ground. Um, we understand that he is the elected president, elected leader of the United States, so we have to give him due respect. China is not monolithic, 1.3 billion people. So I ask this question, understanding you may not be able to represent the sentiments of everybody. But no. how, how many or uh, what is the uh, knowledge base of the average Chinese consumer at this point in terms of being aware of this trade war, being uh, aware of the impact that it's having on their daily lives and or to the economy of China? I think they're very aware because the news about the trade war, the news about what's happening is, uh, you know, on a daily daily basis on their TV or on their social media. So they are very much aware w with what's happening. Uh, in terms of comp uh, impact, I would say it's a little bit similar to what is happening here. I mean, yesterday I was on the streets. I was outside a, super, a market target, for instance, to find out inside as well to find out the prices and to ask. I had asked a couple of people how they feel. They mostly didn't feel so much yet. I mean, I guess uh, the, the tariffs on consumer prices are just kicking in. So it's going to take a while for people to feel the pain, for ordinary people to feel the pain. Although uh, I went to the Chinatown, the um, souvenir shops there, the Chinese grocery stores there are feeling a bigger hit. I think in China is also a very different, different story for different people, for ordinary consumers. Life goes on as normal. But if you're working uh, for an American manufacturer, if you're producing for an American company, you might feel 
the uncertainty at least or if you are not already uh, given up and uh, the American producer going to Vietnam or Indonesia or somewhere else. That's a big point that the president's told Americans here is that jobs are leaving, supply chains are leaving. We've done some reporting from Vietnam where they're being flooded with new orders. Isn't China worried about that? Of course we're worried about that. But, you know, at the end of the day, if prices is lower in Vietnam, in Bangladesh, what are we going to do? Business are going to leave. Um, actually, this started a couple of years ago, right, since 2015. Companies already started to move to places where are lower to Africa as well. Mm. So this is simple economics and we are not going to put tariffs on, let's say, African countries or Bangladesh or Vietnam. We have to upgrade, bring ourselves up on the supply chain, right, be more innovative, uh, develop our basic uh, research and development so that we can be stronger. So these are the, fa the pain of development. Is, is, are there projections of how many jobs you can lose and withstand the loss of? I don't have any specific number at this moment, but I think the, the latest number that I have for the private sector is their revenue, their, pro, their profit rating has actually gone up for the month of July, if I'm not mistaken, meaning they're very resilient, they're very resourceful, you know, they're small, so they're flexible. If they see there's some uncertainty here, they immediately find something else to do. So it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a mixed, some, some bad impact, some, you know, not so very strong.